Welcome to this video where we're going to try to solve the Enigma Mission X challenge and you can access this page at the web address that appears at the bottom of your screen. Now once you're on this page you will notice on the left hand side there is a menu and the first link we're going to look at is the Mission X file. And what this is, it's a letter from Alan Turing just to give us a bit of context about this mission. So we are during World War II and the Germans have got a lot of U-boats, uh, which are submarines uh, across the Atlantic Oceans. And these U-boats are used to sink some of the Royal Navy ships and some of the merchant ships that bring supplies from the United States and Canada to the United Kingdom. Okay, um, now the way the German headquarters communicate with the U-boats is via radio signals and Morse code. And these radio signals are very easy to intercept. However, when we try to understand these uh, signals, they don't make any sense because they've been encrypted using an Enigma machine. Now we've got here four messages and we believe they may contain some key information about an imminent attack on the UK coast um, in the next few days. So we are hoping to locate the exact position of the attack and the date when it's going to happen. Okay, as you can see, this message don't seem to make any sense. And we also have the dates when this message was sent and that is really important. Uh, we're going to need this information. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use an Enigma machine to decrypt because that's one of the characteristics of the Enigma. It can be used to both encrypt a message but it can also be used to decrypt a message. Okay, so if I go back to the top here uh, we can access the Enigma machine emulator which is here. Now in this video I'm not going to explain how this machine works but if you do want to find out a bit more uh, there is a section about inside the Enigma that explains about the encryption process. All we have to know at this stage is that there are four key parts to the Enigma machine. Uh, the top part are the rotors and that's where most of the settings, encryption settings are um, set up. Then we've got a lamp board and a keyboard. Now the keyboard would be used to type either the plain text that we want to encrypt or the cipher text that we want to decrypt. And every time we press a key, it will lit up one of the bulbs from the lamp board and that will tell us what that key has been encrypted to. Okay, and finally we have a plug board which connects different letters together using a wire or a cable and that's part of the settings that are used to uh, further encrypt our messages. Okay, now let's go back to the machine and see how this works. Um, what we have to do is before we can start using this machine here we will have to set it up to the right settings. Okay, now if you see here clearly how it works uh, when I press a letter it's going to lit up a letter on the board here and um, this is how the encryption and the decryption process work. Okay. Um, but before we do so, we need to set the rotors and set the plug boards. Okay, now one of the key aspects of the Enigma machine is that there are um, millions and millions of possibilities on how we can set it up and how we can position the rotors inside the machines. Okay, um, and in order to set up the machines, the Germans used to have a codebook in every U-boat, in every submarine. And the codebook, um, there was one codebook for every month of the year and every page of this codebook had around 30 sets of settings because every single day of the month they were changing the settings of the Enigma to make it really hard for the British troops to try to decode those messages. Okay, so if you remember the first message um, was sent on the 7th of April. So this gives us the setting that we're going to use to decode the first message. Okay, um, the first column here, it tells us which rotors to use because there were different rotors that we could um, apply to the Enigma machine. Um, so in this case, we're going to use rotor 1, 2 and 3. Um, then we've got um, those settings here 
and those settings here, which is about the initial positions of those rotors. Okay, so we're going to need to use that information. So let's remember one, two, and three, and then for the ring settings, W and M. I'm going to go back to the Enigma machine and um, to make it easier, I'm going to open it in a new window. And for you to see clearly on the video clip, I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see the whole Enigma machine. I'm going to put that on the side and I'm going to have the code book on the left hand side uh, to see the settings we need to use. Perfect. So we're looking at rotor one, two, and three. When you click on these rotors here, you can see um, which rotors are being used. So actually we're already on rotor one, two, and three. So that's good. Then we've got the ring settings. We have to set them to W, N, and M. So let's do that. W, N, and M. And we also have um, the other sets of ring settings which are the initial rotor position here and on the 7th of April they've used RAO positions. Here we go. So I'm going to apply the settings and you can see here my initial uh, positions um, is there. Uh, finally we've got further information about the plug board settings um, and these tells us how some of the letters are connected. So basically we would have a, a wire between letter H and letter K. Then we need to connect C, letter C with letter N, I and O, F and Y. Now if you make a mistake, uh, it doesn't matter. You can just uh, click on it to cancel it. Okay, so F and Y, J and M, and finally L and W. Perfect. So I believe we've got all the settings uh, ready here. Now we have to be careful because if you start typing letters, uh, you will see that um, this rotor here is turning, uh, which means my settings are changing. And that's one of the key characteristics of the Enigma. As you ta start typing, the settings are changing and that makes it really, really hard to uh, break the code of the Enigma machine, okay? So if you've made a mistake, uh, like I just did here, I didn't type the letters I was meant to, uh, before trying to decrypt your message, you need to make sure that you put the rotors back into their initial positions. And that was R, A and O. Okay, perfect. So I'm now ready to encrypt or decrypt. Um, if you scroll down, um, you will see that as you type um, on the Enigma machines, it reminds you um, what you've typed and what it's been um, encrypted to. Okay, so I'm going to clear that. And actually here we're going to use to not encrypt, but we're going to use it to decrypt. So I'm going to turn the page of this book. Okay. Uh, perfect. So we're now ready to type our ciphertext. So let's go back to um, the message that we had. Um, you will find them under Mission X. And uh, the first message is here. So I've got here on the left hand side the message that is encrypted that I want to decrypt. The Enigma machine. And I've turned the page here in the book to the decrypt. Uh, so we're going to type the ciphertext and we're going to see the plain text that is resulting. From the decryption process. Now before I start typing um, letter S, I need to make sure that I am all my rotors are in the right positions. So in that case they start with R A O. And I'm going to start typing. So S Y T U N. These are the first five letters. Now they're not necessarily a word on its own. Um, the way codebreakers used to work is they used to split every message in groups of five letters. And that's just to make it easier to follow and to remember uh, where you're up to. Okay, so I've done the first five letters um, and the, the plain text is now here. Now uh, I've got to carry on here with letter T. Now the issue with this uh, process is if I make a mistake, so the next letter is J, if I was to press another letter instead, 
Um, I just cannot carry on as normal uh, because remember the settings are changing and that could invalidate a, a lot of my message at the end. So it's probably better if you've made a mistake to clear this uh, booklet and then to reset the position of the rotors to RAO and to start again from scratch. Okay, so here I haven't done a mistake, so I'm going to carry on. So J, B, F, C, B, R, S, S, Y. Um, and then I'm going to carry on here, X, N, P, K, Q. And finally, the last five letters um, should be Q, Z, M, D, W. Perfect. So I now have uh, my cipher text and my plain text. Okay. And at this stage, you may think, well, actually, this plain text doesn't mean anything at all. So something didn't work. But you've got to remember that we are decoding German messages. So this text here is actually, uh, should actually be in German. Now, I don't expect um, you to know German, but what we've got here, uh, if we go back to this page here uh, in full screen, we have a German book. Uh, and on this German book, you've got some of the most um, useful uh, expressions and keywords that you will need to solve this challenge. Okay, so let's have the German handbook here on the left hand side and then let's compare this with our plain text. Uh, so we've got keine and remember these are not necessary words on their own so they can be grouped. Uh, besonderen um, and actually if you look at your German dictionary here uh, we've got something that seems um, to work quite well here. Um, perfect. So this is exactly uh, the message that we've got. Um, so this is a translation in English and that means nothing to report. So this message is not telling us much about the attack, um, but that's the kind of message that was sometimes sent across um, the radio signals. Um, when someone had nothing to report on that day, basically. Um, so uh, what we're going to have to do here is uh, look at the other messages um, that we have to decrypt. And remember, they are under the Mission X tab. If you scroll down here, and we're going to start looking at the second message. Now, uh, remember that when you use the codebook, you have to use the settings for the date the message was sent or received. Okay, so we're going to have to type this in the Enigma, but before we do so, we need to look up the settings for the 11th of April. I'm not going to do the whole process again. I think you've got the idea now, but uh, you're going to have to change the rotors, change the ring settings and the rotor positions, and then you will also have to reset the plug board uh, before translating the message. Okay, so you've got four messages to decrypt. We've done the first one and you know that it's not really giving us any information. So hopefully message two, three and four will be a lot more useful. And remember what we're trying to find out is when will the attack take place and we want to also find the exact location of the attack. Okay, well good luck with this mission. Bye for now.